So I'm back at it. I'm trying to get back to work on my rock crawler that I've been building. But we've been so busy lately, we've been out probably since mid-May going using this one a lot, rock crawling a lot, been getting lots of lots of good content, uh, a lot of good trails covering some of the best trails in western Colorado from Boulder Canyon to Hard Knocks to Ten Falls and we, we've just been doing a lot of fun stuff and in the meantime uh, I haven't even washed this off since the last time we just got back from Carnage Canyon. So I got to wash that off and then go through it and check everything. And through that little stretch, I, I had to replace a ring and pinion on that. Then before the 10 falls, I found I had a bad U-joint and that's just rock crawling. It's constant maintenance. It's always checking to make sure you don't break down in a bad place. So I'm getting back to work on my rock crawler right here. Now the thing about this is I'm working on plumbing so when i'm talking about plumbing i'm talking about an fittings uh what's an an fitting well that's the expression you're gonna get if you go to your local parts store and tell them i need an an six or eight or whatever because you're working on the plumbing of your vehicle unfortunately the parts stores haven't gone there yet but summit racing and amazon and all those places they have plenty to choose from and where do i use an fittings i use like an threes or fours for my brake lines I use AN6 fittings, which are basically like 3 three eighths inch hose type fittings for my transmission, um, for, my, for my fuel, and AN8s or dash 8s, whatever you want to call it, AN or dash, some people just call them dash. So basically I use dash 8 and on up for my steering, um, except the high pressure side on the Rams, those use AN6. So, I use AN fittings for everything except the radiator on this one. I just couldn't fit them. It would have looked nice. It would have been a nice touch. But I like to use all the AN fittings. It just is a nice touch. It's nicer than hose clamps. Anybody who's used hose clamps and has brushed your hand by them and gotten cut by them, you want to curse hose clamps and never use a hose clamp again. Unfortunately, there's some places I still have to use hose clamps. But I try and use AN fittings everywhere I can. And AN fittings are just a nice fitting that threads on there. It's easily reusable to pull it off for serviceability. And what are AN fittings? AN fittings are fittings, 37 degree flared fittings that were designed uh, by the military, Army, Army, Navy from the research I use to try and standardize um, a type of fitting. And what's nice about them is they're just nice and clean. It makes everything look nice. Like I said, hose clamps are a pain in the butt. And barbed fittings. If you ever use a barbed fitting with a hose clamp and try and pull it back off, it is a pain in the butt. So AN fittings just come off really quick. AN fittings, like anything else, you can spend as much as you want, but there are plenty of more affordable options for AN fittings. Like I said, from Summit Racing, CarTech, Jegs, uh, Amazon, any of those places. And I like to order a lot and have a lot on hand. And for example, I've got a lot of AN or Dash 6 fittings right here to choose from. Where I fell short is I need more Dash 8 fittings. So what I'm doing in this example is I'm running as much as I can. I'm running my fuel system and I'm running my plumbing for my uh, for my steering. And so I'm working on those systems right now and what I do is I lay everything out to try um, and know what I still need and then make a list and then order what I still need. So I'm starting with my steering system. So what I got is my power steering pump right here. I'm using PSC everything just to make it easier. Um, and so PSC sends you almost everything you need. I always need to order a little bit more hose just so that I can install the hose where I like. So we got the power steering pump. That is going to go. I'm also running Hydra Boost too. So Hydra Boost or makes my, your brakes stronger. So what I do is I go to PSC's website and then I look up their suggested hose routing for all of this and that makes it easier. So the pressure side of the pump goes to the Hydra Boost right here to the brakes. It goes through the Hydro Boost. Then it runs over to, to my rear steer valve, which is going to be right here. It goes through the rear steer valve. Now it runs over to my orbital valve, to my main steering valve. After that, it returns back. 
as a lower pressure. It's not as high pressure anymore. Through this, this cooler that I have right here, this fin tube cooler. And then back to the reservoir. Also, the Hydro Boost also has a return back to the reservoir as well. So the reservoir has two, um, it has two AN6 style fittings that I can use to just return back to the reservoir. So both the Hydro Boost and the orbital valve are returning back to the reservoir. So I'm laying all that out. Now, from the orbital valve, you have a left and a right for the ram. So basically what I do then is then figure out how much hose I need to go up to my ram up here and then run them along an upper link where they'll stay out of the rocks. That's where I ran a little short on hose. Because on my rear steer, I like to, this is all just, this is all just basically laid out right now. I've got my high pressure hoses running along my upper link. They'll be zip tied neatly up against this link like this. All the way back here, these are dash six fittings going to the ram and then this this runs all the way up through here it's going to be all zip tied up neatly to my rear steer valve where i want it and that's the other side of the rear steer valve so the rear steer valve has four ports you have a pressure side a return side and then you have the two steering ram sides same with the orbital valve so you got to lay all that stuff out so that you can make it as neat as you can possibly try and make it. That's a tough thing. There's a lot going on there. And I want to route it as nice and neat and clean as I can. So what I like to do is start at the pump, the pressure side. Then I go to my hydro boost. Then I go from there to my rear steer, which is where I'm at right now. So what I'm going to do is cut this hose to the right length. Go put one of these rebuildable ends. These PSC hoses come with rebuildable ends. So if you break one in the field, you can just put that on and I'll do an example of one right now. So I've marked, I've marked this hose exactly where I want to cut it for the link. I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to put the rebuildable fittings on there. How clean that cuts that off. And then after I put this all together, I'm going to blow some compressed air through there to get any junk that might have got in there out. Right here is one of these rebuildable style fittings um, from these weatherhead fittings from PSC. And the first thing I do is unthread it. And then we add, add the outside piece. So this is just going to reverse thread on there. So you just reverse thread it. We can put it back in the vise then reverse thread it right on there until we reverse thread it until we bottom out. And then they say you can put some oil on this end because this end's gonna thread in there. I like, I've got this little grease that I use with other AN fittings. Seems to work, I don't know, about the same. So I put that in there, then, then we're going to start threading this guy in there so this is, this is how it's going to look basically this is threading right into there this is this threads onto the hose and then the rebuildable fitting threads in there and it pinches pinches the hose in there these are really cool fittings you break one when you're out wheeling or something well at least you have a chance to rebuild it out on the trail so i thread this in there and then i I just use my wrench to keep putting it on there. It starts to get pretty tough towards the end. Because this is a high pressure hose, so it's going to see some pretty high PSR. You want it to be strong. Alright, I bottomed it out all the way in there, so should be good. I'm going to put this hose back in, see how it fits. So, this hose will be zip tied kind of down through here, around here, and to the bottom of the rear steer valve. So right now, I was going to give an example how I use AN6 style fittings for like my transmission cooler. So what I've got here is a fitting that I ordered from, and it's got a little, it's got a little RTV on it. I've got some new ones coming. I'm just using these for fit up. So, so that when the new ones come, I already got the hoses set uh, size. So anyway, I've got these little fittings. These are transmission adapter AN6 fittings. So what you do is you can order them from Amazon or Jigs or any of those places and you just order them for a GM transmission. These are the same ones that fit in a 4L60 
than a 4L60E that fit in a Turbo 400. So you can use the same one either way. So what I do is screw this into the transmission right here. They just thread in like that very easily. Then I have my AN6 to a hose adapter. All right, so I've got my, my AN6 to hose adapter fitting. And what I'm gonna do is what I do is I thread those in place and then I get them about where I want them. And then what I'm gonna do right there, what I'm going to do then is measure where they're going to go and where they're going is to this fin tube cooler in the back i've got a large for a transmission cooler it's right behind my radiator so the fan that's going to remove air from the radiator is also going to be blown across this fin tube i, I just like that rather than having more uh, more more fans to say i've used the smaller derail style ones and uh or however you pronounce that and they work I just wanted to try this because I like these heat sink style this is a heat sink style cooler technically they say you don't have to have fans on them but hey what's it hurt having a fan blow across them for example I did that on the front of my other crawler and it's worked really well so what I'm gonna do is run a hose from right here up to the transmission and um, I'm gonna show how I do that. All right, so before I cut this hose, one thing I do is I wrap a little electrical tape. As you can see there, I wrap a little electrical tape on it. And what that does is it prevents it from fraying like you see here. See how that's all frayed out? So I wrap a little electrical tape and that's where I'm gonna get cut it to get a nice square edge. That's a nice square um, there's a little little fray right there, no big deal, but nice square edge. So next what I'm going to do is take this cap and just like those, just like those uh, front steering fittings, it's just going to thread on backwards. And I'm going to take a wrench and thread it on all the way till it bottoms out. And you can stick it in the vise or this stuff isn't, it's a, I've already got it bottomed out right there. It's not that big deal. But then... Then I'm gonna take this other side, grease it just a little bit. I'm gonna get some grease on the end. Then put it in there, stick it, stick it in the vise, and then tighten it up. Now these are very soft aluminum fitting. Um, they recommend that you use something like an aluminum wrench or something. And But if you use like a crescent like this with these kind of square edges, I haven't had much of an issue with messing them up. Um, another thing you can do is put a little electrical tape over it, you know, and uh, it seems to, if you're worried about getting nicks in them and keeping them really nice looking. I haven't had much of a problem with that, but those are some things you can do to kind of preserve these nice looking fittings. I'm going to put a wrap of tape around this, but I'm not going to clamp down that hard. I stuck a little grease on the end of this right there, and then I'm going and I tried to keep the grease from getting inside just to make sure that you no know, grease is going to mix with this transmission fluid. I'm also being careful not to get anything inside the hose. And then I'm just using a basic crescent wrench and being careful not to nick the fitting up. And then I bottomed, I bottomed it out and I can pull my electrical tape back off. And then I pulled the electrical tape off so it protected the fitting from getting nicked up. And now what I can do is I can put this one end on and I can get my measurement for how long the other end needs to be. Mm -hmm. 